Who can feel with his low back in there? So, so far we have the Lebesgue integral in bounded intervals for bounded functions. So, if f is uh, bounded, so modulus of f is greater than m, and uh, e is measurable with the measure of e less than plus infinity. Okay, so we define the integral of f. Okay, here I should put. Uh, uh, well, it's some strange notation. Here, here I should put m. But okay, so it is uh, either the in the supremum, so the integral of phi, and this is clear because just sum of uh, there's a finite sum with phi simple and uh, less or equal than f. And okay, because of our approximation uh, estimate, this is equal to the infimum of the integral of psi, psi simple, greater or equal than f. Okay. So, and this integral well, has the, the properties we, we expect to have. So, it's monotone, it's monotone. So f less or equal than g implies the integral of f less or equal than integral of g, always in this class. Hmm? Is linear. So the integral of a f plus b g, the integral of a integral of f plus b integral of g. It's additive, additive with respect to the, to the, the sets, so as we expect. So, additive, so the integral of the countable union of sets of f okay, is equal to the sum, so they are disjoint. It's the sum of the integral of those sets. Then okay, we discover also that uh, then we have also a limit theorem. So the bound well, this should be the the like the, the, what say, the limit theorem. So if f n converts to f almost everywhere, and everything is bounded, and e is bounded, so it's uniformly bounded with respect to n. Then, okay, we have the, the integral of f, actually we have the integral of f minus fn converts to zero, which implies that the integral of f converts to the integral of fn. <coughs> okay, so far so good. Then I have some strange question for you. So, is a, a Riemann integral function Lebesgue integral? Yeah, why? Because of, because of the definition of the Riemann integral. Yeah. So you take a vertical line, take the supremum and the infimum, and clearly this supremum and infimum are simple functions. Oh, F is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then another question is, if the measure of E is zero, what is the integral of F? Is zero. Okay. And now we are going to extend to functions which are positive, even if f is plus infinity. And assume that if it is positive, I just add it. I cannot take this guy. Let's assume just half. So it's still zero, even if f is plus infinity on a set of measures zero. So I'm integrating on a set of measures zero f which is plus infinity. Yeah, it's a strange... Uh, I don't know why I put the exercise in here. Because <laughs> clearly it, it should be after this. But okay, we will see. 
And another question is, do you think that the boundary here is essential? Is? Yes. Is essential? Yes. So I can I can no, no. only write something else, but the, if it is not bounded, can you find a sequence for that such that the theorem does not hold? I don't have a problem with any theorem. We, uh, we define the integral of the for bound expansion. If the F n are not uniformly bounded, they can converge to something which is not bounded. Even they are all bounded. But they converge even to something which is bound. What? But no. they converge to something which is bounded. So the exercise is the are not there exists Fn bounded Fn converges to F bounded oh. but uh, the integral of F n does not converge to the integral of F. No, I said something before that. I said mm -hmm. that even if we forgot about the fact that N N are uniformly bounded. There is another problem, problem that can happen. That Fn converge to F, which is not bounded. Which is not bounded. Yes, but I can make it. To, I can ask them bounded. to converge to something which is bounded, and still uh, the theorem does not hold. Okay. Yeah, certainly I can make something. They go to plus infinity or minus infinity. But in that case, it's not. An, I don't know. We have an example to remember. I am trying to see if this, this condition is equivalent to this. Saying that F and are bounded, they converge to something bounded. Then F is bounded, except as possibly set of measure zero. But which means here yes, is almost everywhere bounded, so it is bounded. <laughs> so it is bounded almost everywhere as usual, no? Which means we have to be. You have an idea here? I think we saw this example. The example was something with n one over n with the n. It's always like that. Just a point. Yeah. If we take the absolute value of fn, yeah. right? absolute value of fn uh -huh. is equal to the absolute value of fn minus f plus f, right? I did name nothing. Okay, if the n is inside the absolute value. Yeah, so then the, uh, the triangular inequality gives us that the absolute value of fn is less or equal to the absolute value of fn oh, minus f plus the absolute value of f. Mm -hmm. So the absolute value yeah. of f is less than some mm -hmm. so it's bound. Yeah. And by the, co by the convergence, we you, can... You're, remember, you're you are not using this yeah. of that. No, no, not uniform convergence. That's just the for conversion. Ah, not uniform conversion. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the example. So we have to keep in mind, this is uh, something which, uh, well, even if we are going to relax this condition here, somehow we cannot uh, forget about this guy. But the limit of those ones are bounded? Yeah, it's zero. For every x different than zero, f n is equal to zero for n greater than one over x. Okay. Oh, so this is important in the case. Keep in mind because uh, this is one of the key counterexamples. Every time we have to build something which is strange where you don't have integrability. This example usually does the job. And then there are some other examples. But so now we start with the, the positive Lebesgue like integral. So Lebesgue like integral for positive function. So now it's, uh, and we don't care even this thing here. So we replace everything with f greater than zero and measurable. So how to define? I already said how to define that. Uh, so this is me. This is, now now the integral can be plus infinity. Yeah. I just forget. I just remember that okay. When I have to multiply by a, it should be only for positive. So I'm doing half of the of the line of the linearity just for positive. Mm -hmm. So it's a cone. 
So now I have to do something about this definition because one of the two is meaningless. Each function, hmm? Each function and L0 can be written as a limit of the quantum function which are bounded. Which are bounded. So which one of the three is uh, the good one? The first, first, because the second kidney would be plus infinity. Yeah. I mean, in general. Well, it may happen, but then we fall back to the other one. It is positive and bounded above from bounded function is clearly bounded. So, okay, we cancel this guy. And now we can do even something else, just to, to relax. Because, uh, okay, if I want to apply this definition, I have always to find the, uh, the, the simple function. Actually, the simple function clearly well, is the basic for computing the integral. So no matter what you do a computer, compute the integral of this guy, he will compute simple functions for intervals of open sets. He's, he's not able to do something else. Okay, but so since now we want to relax for proof to have more tools, well, I can, instead of phi, I know how to integrate g, g simple, instead of simple, I can make g bound. which is exactly the same. It's just that uh, I just say, well, uh, instead of taking simple function, I can approximate sim with simple function bounded in integrals. And, uh, okay, and here I can take uh, bounded with the finite, finite uh, support. So it's the finite on some set E which finite support. So this is the integral I can compute by a function on a set of finite measure and then I can take the limit instead of taking simple functions. Okay, okay so we are going to prove the same here. Okay, and then we have to do something about this guy. So let's cancel this guy. So, uh, this is a little bit boring because uh, you know what is going to happen. So, maybe I, I will try to be a little bit fast, no? This is a... Uh, I mean, you know that it's going to satisfy these properties, otherwise I'm not going... I will not be here to teach you this thing. <laughs> Very safe. So, okay, so let's see something more interesting first. Ah, yes, okay. The check check inequality. Okay, and this how they write the Russian names, uh, it, it, it depends on, the, on the, the author, so I stick with this Chebyshev. And then the question is, we already saw this, this statement. So let's f k greater than 0. And f is of course measurable, then for all lambda greater than zero, the measure of the set where f is larger than lambda is bounded by one over lambda. Um, okay. The integral of f Far from what is written here. So I'm saying, ah, don't run. 
So the, the characteristic function where f is greater than lambda is less or equal than we times lambda less or equal than f by definition. Then integral of this characteristic function which is by definition is lambda times the measure of this set is less or equal than an integral of f. Okay, that's the proof. So now clearly the, the only thing is that I'm using properties which I should prove. So let's see which properties. They are written there, but uh, I have to be careful. So, which property am I here? I am? What? Um, which properties I, I apply here, in order, I'm applying in order to get the, the monotonicity? The monotonicity, which is here. But I apply the monotonicity, I still have not proved monotonicity. So, how to do the proof without using that monotonicity? By the definition. So on the for the definition I have that from definition. So this is actually the, the this is the line you know, of the proof. You have just to fill the gaps now, no? Understand the so I'm going to prove this time. But I cannot prove directly because still I haven't proved the monotonicity. Okay, so I look for definition from definition. Okay, okay. Let's say four four bounded function. bounded positive functions it's valid because we already proved in bounded set so I have that uh, the integ sorry lambda the measure where g greater or equal than lambda intersected at any set e we find that measure is less or equal than one than the integral over e of g. Now, okay, this is less or equal than the integral of f by definition. No. by definition of integral, actually or not R. If G less or equal than F. This is the definition. So now I have just to pass to the limit of the guy. Okay. So okay. So the measure is additive, so I can just take intervals here. So this becomes by additive, sigma additivity. This becomes lambda, the measure of G lambda, less or equal than the integral of F for all G bounded, less or equal than F. Enough? Can you give me a G bounded such that this is equal to F greater or equal than lambda? So this passage sigma additivity I write R like the countable union of Z, Z plus 1 and I apply in each set and then I add. No, 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 yeah, I pass to the limit, sorry. So let's say minus N, N. Better like this. Minus z, z, and pass to the limit. And then this is the, yeah, the union of the limit. <coughs> okay. Just as I suggest, I take uh, g is equal to the minimum between f and 2 lambda. It's okay. 
When g is larger than lambda, f should be larger than lambda. OK, so I have this nice thing. So uh, this set, I think, contains uh, uh, this set uh, contains this set larger than lambda. Yes, because uh, g is less than f. G is less than f by definition. Yes, but this g is bounded and uh, it's equal to f when it's less or equal than lambda, and it's two lambda when f is larger or equal than lambda. So when f is less than lambda, f is equal to g, which implies that g is less than lambda. So it's not in this set. If f is larger than lambda, then there are two cases. Or g is equal to f, or g is equal to lambda. In any case, g is larger than lambda. So the two sets are the same. Is that your question? Uh, I understand that without using this, can you show? Which one? The, the, you, no, no. Which passage is this? This set uh, contains this set. So this set. Uh, I'm saying that with this G, in general, this set is smaller than that yeah, set. So that's why we can But I choose a particular G where this set ah. is equal. And this is the choice. Okay. Or you can pass to the limit. It's the set. Okay, I have a so let's cancel this strange proof. This is on just the other side of the blackboard, so that. So corollary. So if f is larger than zero, the integral of f is less than plus infinity, then f is less than plus infinity almost everywhere, which is pretty clear, no? Because now I'm allowing f, I'm allowing f to be plus infinity, so. Questions here? It's a con you see that it's directly consistent of this thing? Of this thing? This is bounded, and then this guy is the intersection of all these sets, where lambda goes to plus infinity. So this is a decreasing family of sets, and it's always some little trick. Well, one has to be careful, and at least one of these sets has bounded measure. Actually, all. Remember, I want to apply that the limit of the decreasing sequence, the limit of the measure of the decreasing sequence is the measure of the intersection. And this I can do, I can pass inside the, the limit inside the, 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 the measure if uh, there is at least one with the measure. Okay. So now we prove uh, uh, what is needed here. So, the, the, so why I, I do this first is because uh, whenever you have to estimate this thing here, there are one easy case, that is when the one of the integral is plus infinity. One of the two sides is plus infinity. When it's bound, it's fine. Both integrals are finite. Then you can use the, that estimate, it tells you that basically the function is fine. OK, so theorem is F G greater equal than zero and measurable, then okay, the monotonicity the monotonicity implies and finally we have the ability A B greater equal than zero, then A F B G a integral of f, b integral of g. So a comment on the notation is that uh, you should be correct to put the measure every time here. Yeah. 
unless it is uh, clear that you're using just one specific measure, and in this case it's the Lebesgue measure. So I will forget about uh, writing Bx or M, but the correct way should be to put always the measure. This should be the correct way. Okay, so this I don't need it, I need just uh, the, the definition. Okay, so let's start with the first. The first I'm saying is tricky. Why? Yes, I'm taking the supremum, and the supremum I'm going up in the definition, and that one is the right inequality. Okay. So the first trivia. So the second, let's, there is this uh, in between. So the second is the multiplication. I'm saying that this is trivia under which condition there is one case. <coughs> okay, if the integral of x plus infinity is in a and a equal to zero. I have to decide what it means zero to plus zero times infinity. Zero. It's not defined that I say if I say zero. Just my notation. Just my assumption. So, let's do this one. If a equal to zero, then zero equal to zero times infinity, and I say this is equal to zero. This is my rule. It's not defined, but I say that I accept this, this uh, multiplication of rule. And otherwise, and this? Hmm? It's obvious, no? Because you just uh, take any bounded divided by a or multiplied by a. So the class, so this family of, of functions is just the risk a. So let's say obvious, also this one. So let's do final, the final case. So f plus g is equal to final case. f g. Okay, and as usual, there is one which is easy and one which is more difficult, which is the easy one. The easy one is, has the same inequality like this. Because the supremum has to have the inequality on one side. And this case is that, okay, if, okay, let's say, if fn less or equal than f, gn less or equal than g, these are bounded, and whatever, and the uh, final support. Then, uh, Fn plus Gn bounded with other or less or equal than F plus G. Okay, and then I have the first rule, the monotonicity. So for any f n g n less or equal than the integral, so I get, I'll obtain that by properties. This is the one. f n plus g n, and because I have the linearity for functions which are bounded, less or equal than integral of f plus g. And now, okay, I just take sequences which converge to the supremum. So just this uh, converge to integral of f and this converge to integral of g. That's it. So let's do the other case. So I take h bounded and concentrate on set uh, i net. And h less or equal than f plus g. Now, what I define? So 
So on the far, okay, let, let, I think if I do a drawing, it's okay. You understand? Because there is no. So let's say t is, a, t is a, and t is g, and then I, I, I have the sum. And now I, I give you H. It is not so small, but let's say H is this one. Just to have the, the various cases. <laughs> okay, these are all the cases. H is below F plus G, but is above F. Well, it crosses the graph of F, it crosses the graph of G. So which is for you the functions that uh, are fine. You have already monotonicity. Okay, I see these two functions. One, so that's L is equal to the minimum H and F. And now I have the other function. So the other, so this is going to be zero, let's say, and then I have the other function, which is, uh, um, okay, L is okay, let's say L prime, is, I say, H minus L. So this is clearly less or equal than F, and now let's see, H minus L, I'm saying that this guy is uh, less or equal than G. Because uh, when this guy is equal to H, this is 0, I'm fine. When this guy is equal to F, this is H minus F, and this becomes equal to G. So, I have two functions which are below f of g such that l plus l prime is, uh, uh, is equal to h. Okay, let me cancel now, this guy is not important. So, for this I have the integral of uh, l plus the integral of L prime is that L prime is equal to the integral of H and now um, but L and L prime are less or equal than F of G so this is less or equal again by monotonicity F plus G and now what I do is the same thing I take the supremum with respect to H and I reach the integral. Supremum with respect to H and I discover F and I have the other piece. Okay, so it's a linear. Now it's a little bit boring because this is what you expect uh, to do. So maybe uh, let's, let's do something. Uh, so let, let's Let's do this statement like exercises, otherwise you get uh, bored. I, I'm bored too, I'm, I don't, don't believe that <laughs> I like teaching this. I mean, I, I know already what, what's the story. It's like teaching the story when you know the end. So, uh, so let, let's, let's do something non, non obvious. So I'm asking you first. Do you believe the additivity with respect to the, to the, if I put a set here, the additivity holds? Yeah, of course, it should hold. You believe the answer is yes, otherwise not an integral. You have an idea how to prove it? So, some exercise, the integral of countable union of n of f. Do you have an idea how to any idea how to prove this guy? 
this should be the next proposition, but I see that it's becoming so boring that maybe it's better to change the way. How to prove that? Because if we don't, you can drop you step in. So one is easy, one is the, as usual. One is uh, the supremo, yes, gives which, which one gives? Which one gives the supremo? Or the monotonicity? Which one gives up automatically the monotonicity? This side. See, which side? This guy or this guy? It depends how you interpret it. <laughs> no, this side. The less or equal? Yeah. No. And w to which function you apply the monotonicity? I don't know, as you see, because I, I see the call f restricted to the so times the Cartesian function of the union is therefore equal to any finite sum of f. So I would say that you get the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And then for the, for the other. to infinity, then you have state to pass to the limit. Okay, the thing is that uh, if this is plus infinity, there is nothing to prove. We have already this inequality. If this is finite, this is finite, so the sequence of integral goes to zero, and then you remove epsilon and you can apply it. Okay? Yeah, the, uh, it's very boring. So. But this one is not boring. And it's a fundamental theorem. It, and indeed, it's a, le it's a lemma. <laughs> Thank you. So there is an Italian slang where Fatou means uh, do everything. But actually, it's really appropriate in this case. <laughs> So you take a, a family of uh, measurable functions, positive, and, uh, and then you have the following theorem. Okay, uh, this is stated, uh, no, like this. Then the integral of the limit of an n, yes, limit integral of n. Okay, let's see this statement. This is really fundamental because uh, you prove that basically, well, not all, but many of the results using this simple lemma. Let's see if I have some smart way. Uh, I have just an idea. Yeah. The definition of the S, right? When it's the supremum of the integral of simple functions which are less or equal to S. The one. By the definition of supremum of real parts of R, we can just say that the integral of f is the limit of the integral of some sequence of simple functions converging to f. Yes. Right? Yes. And if we use that, yes. then this we get direct equality from by direct I mean, without even proving the power. What, what you have a sequence, but then you have to prove that uh, one sequence. Okay, yes, one sequence. Then you restrict and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, be, because this property is easy. Uh, uh, wait a minute. When you have a sequence approximating f restricted to i, is a sequence which is uh, in each i you sh you choose a sequence. No, no. Why? 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 Because what is the definition of an i? No, on the union. 
I choose P on the union. Okay, and oh. then uh, clearly you get restricted to EI yeah. is an approximation in F to EI. Yeah. But vice versa, by definition, so this is uh, F approximated to EI by simple function. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. If, if, if we have a big set, B, and uh, we choose a sequence of functions converging to F, and approximate right. exactly the integral. Mm -hmm. well, cool. Then if we take subset restriction, satisfy the same idea. The result is too so clearly what we are saying is just that we are splitting the hair into for for the the construction. So what is the definition the integral of the E of F by simple function? We would say it's related of integral of simple function. Okay, now define which are phi. What? Which is phi? Phi is a zero to e or not? Yeah. This phi. Simple and then and uh, and let the ripple f let's say. Okay, and everything is positive. Yeah. Okay. And that's all. The limit. So the limit of our part is only. Yeah, the limit of such sequence. There is some sequence that was the integral Increasing. Limit. What? Increasing to F. Yeah. Yeah, it works then. Yeah. This is why the definition of the supremum when you have a subset of R. Yes. The supremum it means there is a sequence. But of the uh, uh, because we define, if you remember, we define something else. So phi uh, should be approximating F in E. In EI, because I'm integrating in EI. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the property that I told you. No, but if we approximate the integral of F over e, e then, it, then the restriction approximates it on all subsets of E, measurable subsets of E. Yeah, that, which is true, but then you have to go back to prove the, this property, and uh, where you go back and use basically um, again the, 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 the fact that. Uh, the monotone convergent stuff, or the, not the monotone, it's not the monotone, we haven't seen yet, but basically you are using a convergent property, mm -hmm. which is true, yeah. but uh, is not explicitly stated. Ah. You see, because we use the Egerhoff theorem, which tells you each EI. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but actually it's true, because, uh, because clearly you can say, wait, wait, wait a minute, if the integral is finite, then uh, then I can do that, because uh, I restrict to a set of finite measures, I would throw out just epsilon and I'm fine. But uh, uh, for, for, for the line we choose, this statement, which is correct, has not been proven. In just a choice, we can start with something, uh, the statements, and do the rest as corollary. Uh, clearly what you are saying is a corollary of what is written. So you decide which one you want to put first. For our line, this is a statement which is not, has not been proved. Because if you remember, to prove that the convergence of the stuff will use a growth theory. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know, it's just a... Uh, what is the... the sorry, I, I hope you like this, this way. So let's look at this stuff, yeah, proof. <laughs> So, first observation is that the limit of uh, phi. So, I can, I can, I don't know if I really need that. So, let, let's start with this guy. So, the first observation is that the infimum over, let's say, the notation n, larger than than k of fn, is less or equal than fk. Observe. So this is trivial. So now we integrate by monotonicity. The integral of the int of n greater or equal than k of f n is less or equal than the integral of f k. Now I just need to pass to the limit. Take the limit with 
respect to k. So take e. So is this set so does this number have a limit? Yes. Yes, because it's increasing. And when a k is, incre is uh, increasing, clearly the infimum is done on a smaller set. So um, I get z over k n greater or equal than k of f n. And uh, actually here I don't know if the limit of the integer, because it's not stated here that the limit of the integer converge. But certainly I can I take the subsystems converging, I, think I can take the subsystems converging to the limit. So I get lim e over k of integral of k. So half of inequality is gone. So this part. And now I have to reach this guy here. Okay. What I want to do now is the following. I need the limb over k of the integral of the e is equal to the integral of the limb of the inf, which is the limit. And then, okay, the statement is done. So this property here we will see later, and uh, so the, the book shows us this is the the monotone convergent theorem, but we first prove for two and then the monotone. In other books, they prefer to prove the monotone and then for two as a corollary. I just follow the book here. So, how to prove this statement here? Some bounded function which lies before, below, definitely be below, well, not definitely, in the limit is below of this guy and uh, it's uh, larger or equal than h. Okay, maybe a suggestion. Do you understand what is the problem now? No. No, you don't understand. The, I know how that the limit can be passed inside if I have this guy converges and uh, it's uh, in a set of finite dimension. Remember, this is our limiting theorem we have got for the first definition of integral is just a bounded function of set of bounded dimension. So I, I want to, to, to apply this theorem. So I need to find some bounded function which does the job. Okay, let me say H n is H the infimum of H and uh, the infimum uh, sorry over sorry H k 
and the derivative k f n. So is H k converging? So is H k bounded? That means positive. So it's bound, bounded by H. In particular, as the, the set where is integrated, what is different from zero is finite measure because I choose H accordingly. Is H is H K converging and if converges to what? Let's fix X. Okay. Well, it's increasing to H simply because uh, this guy converts to A to the limit sorry to the integral of the limit well, well, here the integral of the limit and the integral of the limit is greater than or equal than H by by one point, by our observation ok so I can apply and then I get that uh, <coughs> the integral, so the limb over k, sorry, I get that. Yeah. Integral of inf and that will represent k, fk, fn. Okay, this guy here, by definition of H k, is larger than is uh, larger or equal than the integral of H k. The limb of k, the integral of H k. Now I can apply my theorem, and the limit of this guy, integral of H. This is by the bounded convergence. Okay, so for any H, I have that the uh, Limit, sorry, um, no, wait a minute, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I did, a, I did a mistake. It's not this what I wanted to prove. So, no, this one is, is okay. I have that the integral of the limit, so for any, <laughs> sorry, I got confused. I have to prove that. Uh, this guy converged, so um, uh, the, so I have that, that this is uh, so I take h. Okay. Oh, this is less or equal. I, sorry, it was correct. <laughs> it was correct. I can't. I, I get it because we have automatically the inequality, the, the inequality less or equal. So I want to prove the other was what was written here. Lim over k, the integral of the infimum. Was, was was correct. Okay, this is bounded by larger than H K, and this is integral of H. So I discovered that the limb of this guy is larger or equal than the integral of the limit F. Okay. And okay, and this is what uh, it's okay for the inequality. So after this proof, I'm sorry, because at some point I wanted to prove that it's equal, and it is the next theorem, which is the monotone conversion. Increasing to a function f. Then, 
integral of fn, the limit is equal to the integral of f. So the difference here is here, a very, very little requirement, but the monotonicity. But I'm not saying any boundedness and so on. So in, uh, in the, the thing over here was to say that the limit of this guy is equal to this guy here. We need just half for the proof. So we have already Fatou. And then uh, it's actual order. From Fatou, the integral of the limit, of the limit, which is the limit, the, inter the limit of the integrals, but since it is in everything is increasing, it's just the limit. And for the other, the monopoly. Okay, if you see, if you remember the proof of uh, of Fatou, you can deduce uh, Fatou from this theorem. So you can decide. Or either use the, the proof for this estimate to prove this estimate here, or you use, uh, and then you deduce Fatou or vice versa. So let's see if I have a. And finally, we have the definition, okay, which is strange. But so after this guy over here, we define that f is integrable, so non measurable integrable. And now about the notation, it's a little bit strange. That's all. So, okay, let, let's call just integral. In later, when it, it has a sign, the notation will be L1. If the integral of f less than plus b. So we have measurable, then you have an in between class, which is the fact you can compute the integral but can be plus infinity. And finally, you have the integral, the integral is finite. And now I have a question, which is uh, this exercise. Prove that the monotone convergence theorem does not hold for decreasing sequences. For decreasing? For decreasing. Exercise Fn greater or equal than zero and Fn Convergent to f, but integral of n okay, is larger and not equal to the integral of f. And then we add something, so give a condition such that this holds. If you, if you remember, we had. You remember, I, when you have the, the additivity, sigma additivity, and limited properties for sets, you remember, I say that, uh, well, this theorem, the monotonicity with, of the measure, the sigma additivity plus it to the limit is the same as the theorem here, no? So, okay, so let, let, let's see in which sense is the same. Here I'm saying that the area, you have this area here, which is the area below where n, it enlarges up to the area of F, up to the set F. And we know that uh, the monotonicity of the measure holds for increasing sequences, no matter what. So this statement is the monotonicity of the measure in uh, two dimensions.
And uh, now the other statement is the opposite. So I have uh, a family of sets in two dimensions which is shrinking. And I, I would like to say that monosonicity of decreasing sequences. So the limit, sorry, the, the buses to the limit, the limit of an intersection of sets <coughs> is equal the measure of the the limit of the measure of, of uh, in, sorry, the, the limit of the measure of set is equal to the measure of the intersection. And if you remember, there was a condition. So, can you give uh, an example here, the counterexample of the monotone, and then the use when should would be correct? One over m, the absolute value of a, and the absolute value of a. times. This decreases to zero. to zero, but the integral is infinity. And now, the fact that the integral is, incre is infinity is the key point, or is just uh, well, you can make some integral finite? It's the key point. It's the key point. Why? You remember when we said that, that, that the measure of the decreasing sequence was at least one as finite measure. So this whole if interval say f1 is less than plus infinity. Okay. So you see that this is the same. Okay, today maybe we I am so this part is quite boring because we prove things which are uh, obvious in some sense. But so now we have finally we can define the integral for general f. Okay, what would be the interval for general f? I'm using again the, the add drawing here, so just this. So this is with the sign plus, this is with the sign minus, and then I can define. So it's equal to the integral of f plus minus the integral of f minus. Now, for the book, it says that both have finite measure. <coughs> and we say that f is in L1, and in this case, we say f is integral. And the notation is L1. Now it's correct, L1. Now, uh, usually you will see another definition of one, which is here. And actually, this is the definition, which the integral of the modulus is finite. Hmm? It's not true in Riemann. No, it's not true in Riemann when you take limits <laughs> for generalized Riemann. Yeah, no, I mean, Riemann is when the absolute value is integrable. It not means that f is integrable. That's very uh, yeah. yes. of the value. Yes. But we, we already, it's already strange the fact that uh, um, the mode, well, we know composition is fine for Borel and it's already out of the limit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so usually this is the definition we'll see in the box. And usually here you allow just one to be finite. But clearly then if one is finite, you have a trouble which is not a linear. You cannot multiply by leaf constants. And that's it. So maybe I, I, if you allow me, I will just keep something which is uh, obvious. So let's give for granted. Well, the proof would be, as usual, we have to apply the definition to prove that it's monotone. It's linear, and okay, I don't like it, and then it's additive. 
Great, allow me to skip this proofs. Are you fine? So if I have to prove it, you just take the definition. Now you know that this is linear, for example, and then you split the integral into the two parts, and then you prove which one is linear. You add uh, in the correct way, you get the linearity. And even the additivity, everything is the same. So let's keep this stupid part and very boring. And instead, we do the, this uh, fundamental theorem, which is the Lebesgue convergence. That there's a boundary convergence theorem, usually the back convergence theorem. So Fn converges to F, and Fn is less or equal than G in L1. Then integral. Uh, say Fn minus F is equal to zero. Oh, okay, let's prove something something different. Let's prove that it's a consequence. Let's prove that n is equal to yeah, the limit. Interoperative, just uh, because it is easier. Well, the other is the same. It converts to zero, then you add something. Well, let's prove this one. It's a fatu. Because I have the G. So apply fatu. Fatu requires a function to be positive to Fn plus G because of this sign. Okay, so I have that the limit, the integral of the limit of Fn plus G. And what, what is this limit? By the convergence this is the integral of F plus G and by linearity this is the integral of F plus integral of G. Limit Fn plus G, and by linear, this is the limit of integral of Fn plus the integral of G. So, very well. Integral of F less or equal than limit integral of Fn. Let's do the other side. So apply Fatu to minus Fn plus G, which is still positive, and what you get is the opposite. Because now it's minus, less or equal than minus, and then you reverse. Let's go on with some property then. Let's see if I have something. Some things of size. Things of size. Suppose the I is converging to E and F is in L1, then the limit of an i of integral of i f is equal to the integral of e of f. Okay, 
I said I'll proceed short and long or whatever. So how to do that? There are several possibilities, and what you prefer to apply them, we can apply it to different statements. And just to, to choose which one you like more. This one? Yeah, yeah, of course. Apply to what? Fn is equal to f from the description and zero outside. Yeah. And g? F. Yeah. Not use. <laughs> I'm sorry, why is more? Yeah. Okay. Or the additivity, the same the additivity. Have the additivity. But the additivity, there is one problem. That, <coughs> you know, the additivity, we have to that to verify for the definition. Because we have the additivity for uh, not exactly for this class. So, yes, this is the fastest. Once we have the level convergence, we deduce even the additivity. Okay. Um, okay, I, I will introduce now and stop because. Uh, but it's a hard day, probably, for, even for me, as I said. So we end my day kind of minutes earlier. And uh, I, but I, I, I introduced this concept, and uh, let's see if you... Which is uniform integral. So let's go back to the strange example. So the function fn is n times the greatest function of 0, 1 over n. Does this function satisfy Lebesgue? So is the, there exists, first question, there exists uh, g such that Fn is less equal than g and g is equal to 1. Exposing the minimal G. <laughs> what is the area? This plus V, because it's like the sum of. Okay, we compute is uh, so okay. Uh, so it's one, and then you have uh, one half, one third, whatever is like the sum of the formula. Implicit proof. I mean, deduce. Suppose that there exists G. Then I apply the bag, and I get that. Then from the back, the limit of the integral of n, which is equal to 1, should be equal to the integral of the limit 
which is equal to zero. It's impossible. Unless the Telebeck theorem is wrong. Okay, so the uniform integrability wants to rule out the problem that has this function, which is a, a big problem. So uh, the, my question is, Support, so I, I think this function is always has always measure one, but at the end I don't have anything. Where is going the area? So you can imagine that I'm going to squeeze. I have like a, a rubber, a rubber rectangle, and I squeeze it. But this guy preserves the measure, but I squeeze it to zero. So where is going all the rubber? Here, I'm squeezing, but it preserves the mass, my operation, to infinity. So I want to rule out that it's going to plus infinity. Oh, let, let's open a parenthesis just for uh, for fun. There exists a possi a po it's possible clearly because uh, when something goes wrong, you give uh, another definition to make things work, and this object at hand converges instead to a measure. To a measure, I'm not converging to a function. But if I allow a measure to be plus infinity in some, then I have to define what it means to be plus infinity. I'm just seeing if you if you see what's what's going, what what would be the nice limit outside functions, of course. Instead of having function, I have measures, and they say, well, the measure can have a mass or set of measure zero, of the leg measure zero, like uh, one we saw at the beginning, at the beginning. The easiest uh, measure you can imagine for which every set is measurable. The yes, this is it, the, the, the one, just yeah. one, the delta, the delta. The delta. So in your opinion, this is going to what? The zero, the zero. In zero. Okay, so basically what we do is usually, well, something, I want to take the limit, I cannot take the limit in my class, I enlarge the class and take the limit. But so far, uh, since I want to stay in my class, <laughs> I want to rule out the, the, this example. So what is the basic, well, what is, what is your opinion? What you feel is the, the thing which makes, uh, which would rule, would rule out this set, and this example, this example has the, the bad property that the mass it flows plus infinity. So I want to say no, 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 no. You cannot push too much, too much mass to plus infinity. So I want to control how much mass I can put very far away from me. Because if I don't control it, I do the example, no? So I'm here, I just squeeze it, and then I put my mass 20 million light years from here, and basically I have nothing. I want to say no, no, no. If you are 20 million, you can put too much mass. And it makes a uniform integrability. So let's see if you have some idea that it goes. The next time they will start with the uniform integrability. So you have to put together the, the sentence. Uniform integrability, I cannot put too much mass on when the function is too large. I cannot put too much mass. What you would do. I cannot put too much mass or the integral, which means the integral is small when or the, the measure is small, let's say the measure is small. when the function is too large. To change the 
Okay, let, let, let's start with the function is too large. Yeah. Set of the function is too large. F larger than some n. But why you want to change the measure? Do you need to be bounded? No. So I would say something for let's say something like n, the sequence is less or equal than epsilon. So now make it uniform. So for all epsilon there exists a L for all n. This is uniform integrability. I'm saying that, ah, oh gosh, I cannot, in my sequence, if I L far away from uh, this, well, the set where I live, essentially, well, no matter which is N, I cannot put too much measure. Okay? So, is this example ruling out, so this assumption, then we write it slightly different, because this is the intuition, but then we can do clearly. Uh, but there is a, a, be a better way, which is implied by this, of course. So thus, this definition rules out this sequence. Well, of course, yes, because I said, you see why. Well, at some point where the function is large, when n is larger than 1 over l, oh, sorry, this is multiplied by l, because otherwise this goes to 0. <laughs> yeah, it's multiplied by l. At some point, this multiplied by l goes to plus infinity. It's 1, it's 1, sorry, it's 1. So it cannot happen. So I want to replace this guy with something that is a little bit weaker, but gives me the meaning. But the, the real definition is the following. So for all epsilon, there exists delta. If the measure of E is less than delta, then the integral of F over E is less than epsilon. And this is the correct one. Which in some sense, uh, I replace this one with the integral, which is slightly stronger because we have Chebyshev. So uniform integrability means, well, if the set is very small, its integral is very small. Okay, so we stop here, and uh, then we will start with uniform integrability, but it is important to keep in mind this example, as usual, because it suggests that uh, you need to do something. It's not just any sequence. So if you work with this property, then everything will be much better. Okay, that's it. <laughs>